If you've taken the time to watch some Pistons basketball to start the season, then you know that Jalen Duran has been absolutely dominant. Through three matches, he's leading the NBA at more than 15 rebounds a game, while adding 18 points, 4 assists, just under 3 blocks, and did I mention that this guy is still 19 years old? On a roster that consists of multiple young bigs, he's emerged as their center of the future. Offensively, he's primarily utilized as a traditional pick and roll big, but because of some of the physical tools and skills he brings to the table, he's able to expand upon that role in a way that not many around the league can do. Despite having the physique of a candidate for Mr. Olympia, he's really light on his feet, so he can get downhill quickly, and he's an incredibly explosive leaper off of two feet, always a threat to get above the rim for lobs. Because of that quick burst off the floor, even when a lob is off target, he can come down with the ball before taking off for a second jump, so ball handlers can just toss their passes anywhere around the basket and expect some quality offense. When defenses throw out more aggressive coverages, leaving Duran open for the shovel pass, help has to be in position to meet him right off the catch because if not, he's going to use that space in front of the rim like it's a launch pad to set up his high-flying finishing. And he's got great instincts for reading the coverage and slipping the screen when needed, so those guys on the back line have to be aware and ready to rotate at all times or the possession's ending in a dunk. On those plays where helping defenders rotate in time to take away his launch, he's more than comfortable finishing through traffic or added contact. And not just that, he also adds the wrinkle of quick decision making in the short roll. So when DeRozan and Levine both slide down to protect the basket, he counters by finding Asar Thompson on a cut for an easy dunk himself. Basically what I'm getting at is despite not having the shooting threat, Finding a coverage that works is really difficult, and switching the screen isn't much of an option at all, not because of a dominant low post game, but how he'll crash the offensive glass. Here's another example, Miami's a pretty switch heavy team, and you'd think that by having a big physical wing in Jimmy Butler, you'd be able to get away with him picking up the role, but Duran makes him look like an undersized guard as he gets some more easy offense at the cup. In his rookie season, Jalen Duran averaged 5 offensive rebounds every 75 possessions, which was 5th in the NBA. And while I don't expect this next number to hold, through the first 3 of this season, he's up to 6.6, .6, which is the type of production you only find in the best of the best. He has great feel for reading missed shots and positioning himself in a way that allows him to catch the ball right as it comes off the rim. And while you probably think of most of these opportunities resulting in automatic putbacks because of that athletic finishing, a lot of them are actually further out and allow the offense to reset for a second chance against a scrambled defense. This time he gives it up to the wing and hangs around the top of the key as a sort of connector, then hands it off to Cade Cunningham who steps into three points. Operating with the ball in the middle of the floor like this is actually another way Detroit likes to utilize his skill set, and often that means stepping into dribble handoff action with their various different ball handlers, getting that pick and roll game going off of movement. He's really effective in these spots because of the fact that he's also a good passer, meaning that on a play like this where Jaden Ivey rejects the action, he can fake the handoff and hit him in stride on a dive to the basket which results in an easy lay. It's not just the two-man game either. Because of Duran's size, he's able to see the entire floor and make reads from the middle. In a 5-on-4 situation, he first looks to Stewart in the post, but the defense has shifted towards the paint, so he quickly skips it over to Alec Burks in the left corner, and that's a warm-up jumper. He's quick to recognize advantages for his team to attack. Cade gives him the ball and cuts towards him as if looking to set up the handoff, but right off the catch, Duran sees that Stewart has sealed off Levine with a wide open paint, and places the entry where only he can get to it with no rim protector in position to prevent two points. The Pistons like to run these double big units, so naturally they've made it a point of emphasis to implement these high-low actions, 
what started with a Caden Stewart pick and roll with Duran position just one pass away ended up in a deep post seal. And it's not that Jalen's spacing the floor as a shooter, but with this sort of positioning, Vooch isn't able to protect the rim. So when the entry is again placed with pinpoint accuracy, Stewart's left with a wide open basket. Duran won't hit on every single one of these passes, but I like to see him taking the risk and sort of going through that trial and error phase of what works. Remember, he's 19 years old, so turnovers are gonna happen. Another interesting thing to keep in the back of your mind when you see these Stewart post-ups is that because of Duran's athleticism, he can take on the role of a cutter as well, diving from the elbow with all the space in the world. That athleticism really stands out in transition. In addition to everything he can do in the half court, he's constantly running the floor after turnovers or missed shots, where he's not just faster than most bigs, but such a great finisher when streaking downhill. It looks like Kevin Love is in position to offer some resistance, but with a couple strides he's ducking under and using his length to put the ball in at a ridiculous angle. Another thing he'll do with a bit more pace is find a cross match and seal off position for quick post ups, again just generating easy offense at the rim. Easy offense at the rim is Duran's claim to fame, whether it's in the pick and roll, on the offensive glass, in transition, or setting someone else up as a passer. It can't possibly be overstated how valuable it is to have a guy that's just always going to put pressure on the most efficient spot on the court. You look at his shot diet, almost exclusively dunks and layups, and it seems obvious why he'd be shooting 80% from the field through three games, but that misses the fact that not everyone can get themselves 10 or more shots at the rim consistently, so it's not at all a replaceable skill set. Neither is his defense, which I think is pretty fascinating. At 6'10", he's not the tallest guy in the world, but he boasts an impressive 7'5 wingspan, so think of his measurements as similar to that of Anthony Davis or Clint Capella. Like those guys, he can be a pretty devastating shot blocker. His explosive 2-foot leaping that helps him get above the rim on offense allows him to wipe layups off the glass with authority. He's also a literal brick wall in the paint, so if attackers try to create separation with the use of shoulder bumps, they might just end up with whiplash, cause that dude isn't going anywhere. With that said, I don't think he's yet very good positionally, and what I mean by that is he hasn't yet figured out how to eat up space and cover different threats at the same time, like a truly elite rim protector. That really stands out when he's defending in drop coverage. On this one, he kind of finds himself in no man's land, not really covering his man or the ball, and that prevents him from being a true deterrent. It's not like he doesn't still have good possessions in drop though. I really like his positioning on this one, sliding his feet laterally to cover the restricted area while showing his length, which forces Lowry into a tougher floater. He's also agile enough to show to the ball before recovering to his man, parking at the elbow to help on a Levine drive and quickly moving laterally to get a hand up on Vooch's floater. When he is in the right spot, I think his athletic tools enable him to take away those higher quality opportunities. Ayo Desunmu isn't able to find a driving angle and moves it over to Drummond, but instead of following Ayo back out to the perimeter, Duran's gonna hang around the basket and send away the big man's layup. He makes up for some of those issues as a traditional drop big by being relatively switchable. I wouldn't say he's someone you build a switch heavy scheme around, but he can move his feet well and smother wings with that length. Here's an example where he switched onto Tyler Hero, and you can see that agility as he sticks with a couple changes of direction, and it's just tough to shoot over the top of someone with that large of a frame. Here's another one, picking up Ayo Desunmu on the perimeter, and this time he actually gets beat off the dribble, only to recover from behind with an outstanding block. If I were you, I'd keep an eye on these chase downs. They're starting to become more and more common with each game, whether that's in transition, on a switch, or just helping from the top of the key. And these big time plays in rear pursuit usually save what would be two points. 
Now, I mentioned that I'm not a huge fan of Duran's positioning on defense. I also think he can really lack awareness at times, which probably goes hand in hand. You can see on this play, Love relocates from the top of the key to the left wing, and Duran has no idea because he's too busy watching the ball. And just that little mental lapse is a breakdown that leads to three points. Here's another example. After an offensive rebound, the defense is put into a little bit of a scramble, and with Killian Hayes sliding down to Bam in the middle, it's Duran's job to find Kevin Love and turn away his cut. But again, he just had no idea that he was even there, and the result is a layup. So I do think there are still areas for improvement on both ends of the floor, as expected because he hasn't even turned 20 yet. I'd like to see some better defensive positioning, especially in drop coverage, and I think he can get better at recognizing threats or vulnerable spots in the defense to cover up. Offensively, I like him taking risks, and I think it just comes down to figuring out what works consistently, whether that's with his passing, ball handling, or even finishing around the basket. With that said, he's already a big time impact player because he takes a traditional playstyle, that of an anchoring center, and takes it to a new level with a more modernized skill set. As he continues to grow and improve with age, I think it only becomes more and more clear that he's a huge part of Detroit's future as a franchise. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of Durin. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.